They did it with the last DLC for Just Cause 3 and they're doing it again with Just Cause 4. Hey guys and welcome back to yet another Just Cause video. We're not even a full year after the release of Just Cause 4 and the game developers have already teased us with possible plans for Just Cause 5 which we saw at the end of the Danger Rising DLC. Spoilers ahead, I will be talking about the ending of the last Just Cause 4 DLC, so if you haven't played it yet, I do recommend you skip this video in order to avoid any sort of spoilers. Before we begin, I also wanted to let you guys know that I've got my very own Just Cause merch, the link to that is going to be in the description. It's got worldwide shipping and it really does support me if you buy any of my merchandise. So if you do end up getting it, send me pictures on Twitter or Discord, once again, all those links are in the description, but anyway, let's just jump straight into this. So, Just Cause 5, I bet a lot of you thought it would never happen. Like I predicted, we will be getting a sequel to Just Cause 4, whatever they decide to name it. Today, I just kind of wanted to go over my reasoning to back up my claim, and with the latest DLC, this has actually made it kind of easy for me to back up why I think we're gonna be seeing Just Cause 5. First, let's talk about the ending of Danger Rising, the last story DLC for Just Cause 4. It's been set up that Rico and the Agency don't really get along anymore, with the Agency sending numerous submarines to Solis commanded by Agent Miller in order to kill or take out Rico. However, as we play through the DLC, we discovered that taking out Rico was their secondary objective. The main goal was to recover what's left of Project Iapa. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I keep calling it Ilapa, but I don't think that's the right way of doing it. Maybe I finally nailed it with Iapa. You can let me know in the comments down below. And essentially rebuild it at a friendlier site, which by the looks of things is the United States of America, which is of course the home of the agency. The woman in charge of the whole operation, as we find out at the end of it, was Agent Kane. So I've got a little bit of backstory of Agent Kane. As revealed in the Just Cause 2 PDA, she was born on June 15th, 1970. It's revealed in the mission Love is in the Air that her father owns a vineyard at Napa Valley and that Rico has been there. She and Rico Rodriguez had a short personal relationship sometime before the mission to San Espierto. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. I'm not very good at Spanish if you can tell. Something Tom Sheldon still remains oblivious to. Despite Rico's subtle references, that relationship might be the reason why she's less than nice to Rico during most missions in Just Cause. But they start getting along better during the later missions. She was obviously a minor character in the Danger Rising DLC, and she was the one that tipped off Sheldon to go to the docks at the start of that DLC. Rico in Just Cause 4 has vouched to take down the agency, so it's safe to assume that she will be one of the main villains we'll be facing in Just Cause 5, on top of obviously whoever is in charge of the agency. Which, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Rico's father. Maybe he's still alive. That would be pretty cool. A lot of people assumed before the Danger Rising DLC came out that once we take down Agent Miller and his submarines in Solis, that that will be the end of the agency, but that just didn't make any sense to me. And yes, I did see a lot of comments of basically people telling me that this was going to be the final Just Cause game. That's kind of what I'm basing my claims on when people said a majority of people, just so you know. The Agency at the end of the day is a massive cooperation based in America which have access to some amazing tech so surely a few submarines is not all they have and they wouldn't just relocate to Solis just to take down Rico. In order to take down the Agency we have to defeat them in America which will be the most likely setting for the next Just Cause game. We know that Just Cause 4 didn't sell very well, which reflected in the player numbers at launch, which led many people to assume we won't be getting Just Cause 5. The thing is, if the devs didn't have any sort of plans of making a sequel due to poor sales of Just Cause 4, surely they had enough time to redo some dialogue or take out some stuff, or even just alter the last cutscene in that DLC, to basically wrap up the whole story, being like, yep, the agency has been defeated and whatnot, surely that would have been a very unsatisfying ending to the agency, but they could have easily done that. But leaving it open like that definitely confirms their plans for a sequel. Another thing to consider is that Just Cause 4 was Avalanche's first, what you could consider a failure sales-wise. It's just very unlikely that they would cancel the whole franchise due to poor sales of their latest installment. Up until that point, all the previous games sold very well. 
To me, this just means they'll really pull the whole team together to make Just Cause 5 the best Just Cause game they have ever made, since it will be their final chance to continue the series. If Just Cause 5, in my opinion, is a failure, then I highly doubt we will ever see Just Cause 6 in the future. Another thing to consider is all the tech they built for Just Cause 4. I'm of course talking about the new Apex engine. Of course, Avalanche will use it for the other projects, but the engine was specifically designed for Just Cause in mind. I I assume developing a new engine is quite costly for a company, so they better get a lot of use out of it before throwing it out after one failed game. You got to keep in mind that that was their first Just Cause game on the new engine, meaning they are still testing the waters and seeing what's possible on it, hence why Just Cause 4 launched in such a bare bones state. It was more of a tech demo in my opinion if you look at all the crazy physics and the weather simulation, only with the DLC they actually added new meaningful gameplay additions. So I really do think that Just Cause 5 will have to be a massive game for Avalanche in order for them to obviously continue the franchise, so they're probably gonna pull their whole team together in order to make it a good one. Plus, they now have the time and experience of obviously developing Just Cause 4 on the brand new engine, so I really think Just Cause 5 is gonna be where they can really shine and push the engine to its limits and do a proper Just Cause game, and I'm sure a lot of fans are gonna be blown away by it. I wonder if it's gonna be for the new generation consoles. I'm kind of hoping it will be, and hopefully they take a little bit of time with the game as well to get everything done correctly. Because I think a lot of people are kind of, you know, disappointed with the launch of Just Cause 4, so Just Cause 5 really has to bring all those fans back in order to succeed. And that's why I think we'll be seeing Just Cause 5, and it will be one of the best Just Cause games we have ever seen. It's fair to say that Just Cause 4 has come a long way and has improved massively with the content updates and patches, still has a long way to go to make it the best Just Cause game, but I still think it is an amazing game. They have made a lot of improvements. First of all, the optimization on PC was just absolutely amazing. The gameplay was a lot more fluid, it was more intuitive, it was in a lot of places better than Just Cause 3. Unfortunately, they didn't really have the content to back it up. That was one of the shortcomings of Just Cause 4, but I think that was mainly due to them developing Just Cause 4 on a new engine. So seeing how there is kind of an open ending to the last DLC of Just Cause 4, it is fair to say that we will be seeing Just Cause 5 and Avalanche will be pulling everything together in order to make it a success. Because like I said, if Just Cause 5 fails, in my opinion, that is going to be the end of the Just Cause franchise. It's definitely not gonna finish with Just Cause 4. Question is, when are we gonna get it? Is it gonna be 2021, 2022? I do assume we're gonna start hearing rumors by the end of 2021, and we might see it release early 2020. We'll have to wait and see on that one. And little addition, if Just Cause 5 won't have any sort of multiplayer or co-op, I'll delete my channel. Just saying, Avalanche, just saying. You don't wanna lose your biggest Just Cause creator. <laughs> Put out the multiplayer in it. I'll just say that much. Thanks, boys. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think Just Cause 5 will actually happen? If so, let me know what you'd like to see in that game. Because who knows, maybe the developers are gonna be reading these comments and they may get some cool ideas for the sequel to Just Cause 4, whatever that sequel might be named. Maybe Just Cause Online? I'm not gonna lie, that would be fucking sick. But anyway guys, that is gonna do it for this video. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel for plenty more Just Cause 4 content. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're gonna have a wonderful day, and I shall see you guys next time. Take care, goodbye, bye 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 bye.